Yo, yo, yo. How y'all doing? Start here soon. Um, don't really have a schedule for today. Just any questions as usual. If you've got anything you want to look over, anything that you had that was intriguing you over the week or any setups, stuff like that. Um, probably just go over last week's setups and things that um, I either took or missed out on. I know I took some losses on Friday, even though it was completely just my fault. Um, so we'll go over that. And then probably some general practicing tips and things to look for throughout the week, as well as looking for the daily bias using the one-hour chart. That's kind of the main focus of today, just using the hourly chart to find bias um, and what I look for and how I use market structure, things like that. Otherwise, um, pretty basic stuff today. this up really quick got the hot tea I got the coffee right now oh, it's kind of hot all right so if you're looking at just normal day-to-day -day kind of trades um, I specifically look at the New York session and I use one hour, 15, five, one, and just kind of frame a setup in the morning. I'm um, using the windows between most likely 9.30 and 11 o'clock, sometimes waking up at 8.30, but standard practice every day. Come to the chart at around 9.15ish, sometimes nine o'clock, pull up the hourly. And this is the first thing that I'm looking at. Sometimes I'll zoom out to the four hour of the daily, but for me, the only chart that I really need to find bias is the hourly chart. And there's a couple things that are going through my head of how I'm able to find and pull biases um, going into 930. And sometimes it's useful because then you can use the 930 um, five minute candle, 15 minute candle to expand towards a target, or you just wait for um, the standard procedure of a 15 minute run of liquidity or an imbalance, five minute change in state, and then a one minute market maker model. So there's a couple things you got to look for and understand when you come to this one hour chart. It applies to any chart, but really just on a weekly perspective, the, the hourly will show you that weekly market maker model. So most weeks, there's always going to be some sort of a completion or 75% of a market maker model being formed. And sometimes you can go into the next week and complete it. But this week was a textbook Monday to Wednesday reversal, and then finishing it out on Friday as we close near the low. So it's good to understand there's about six or so different weekly profiles. I really only look for three of them. The standard ones being Monday or Tuesday making the low and we expand into Thursday, Friday. Then we have a Monday, Tuesday, not low of the week, but kind of ex continued expansion, Wednesday reversal, or you have a choppy week. Thursday creating the higher low and then expand into Friday. These are really the only two that I'm looking at. Um, now you can anticipate the first one when the previous week has already kind of created that original consolidation near the top sometimes. Obviously this can be flipped for bearish movement, but start that um, first half of the market maker model on this side and then probably dipping into a weekly or daily PD array expand that over and then the next week we'll have that classic expansion dips lower again sweeping stops and then moves up like that this is where we're most likely retracing to a pd rate for value gap things like that like we saw this week and this one is when we have high impact news fomc cpi um, or nf most likely nfp creates this kind of profile now besides the weekly profiles we'll actually just word it up like this so one hour chart for bias, make it a little bigger. So I'm looking at the weekly profile for your MXM. We're looking at the narrative and that's what price has done, what it's failed to do and why it's going to reach a target that we assume is going to be the draw liquidity. We've got 
market structure, advanced market structure, um, order flow. And just kind of anticipating news drivers, I guess, is the last one. But this is what goes through my head on Monday um, and really throughout the week as soon as I pull up the chart. All these different little things. Um, very occasionally we'll use zoom out and use for our daily PDRAs. They're helpful to look at. But if we just use this structure, you're, it's for me, it's quite easy to find um, the bias. We're talking about um, hourly bias. So simple stuff. I'll probably post this on YouTube as well. But So for narrative, when you, we want to see what's the most recent buy side or sell side sweep. What fair value gaps have we filled? Um, what have we failed to hit? Meaning if there's a sell side pool and we've gotten super close to it and it creates relative equal lows, that's something that's of interest. Um, and is there a completed or are we going to complete a market maker model? So that all goes, in, goes into narrative. Market structure is a little bit harder to teach. Um, T Trades did a really good video on it about advanced market structure. It's the same exact thing. It's covered in episode 12 of the, of the 2022 model. Um, and it's using short-term lows, long-term lows, intermediate-term lows, and the highs, respectively, um, to frame high probability expansion days. So when we're looking at these like Wednesday, as we dig into a high time frame PD array up here, I also like to leave the annotations on the chart for about a week or so just so you can frame a bias easier. So leave, I like to leave the sell side, buy side, for value gap pools all on the chart as I'm building a, a bias. But as we sweep internal range buy side, and as we dig into this for value gap, we're also considering day of week. So we have Wednesday here. Um, and your market structure shows you we have a short-term high here, a, another short-term high that's higher than this one, and then a short-term high that's lower than this one here, right? So that creates a long-term or an intermediate term high. In fact, that we're digging into a higher time from PD rate, I would count that as a long-term high. Um, now, as we approach the, drop it on the 15 minute chart. As we then approach the New York kill zone and we structure that with market, with market structure, advanced market structure, and with a higher time frame gap, you can assume, okay, as soon as we see some sort of a 15 minute PD rate, either a fair value gap, or a sweep of stops in the other direction, then we can start marking out our sell side pools and hopefully reach down into that um, during the morning session. And then if you go into, here's your 15 minute gap. Well, we know as soon as it fills this, we're expected to see a one minute market maker sell model. So we go back to Wednesday on the one minute chart. Let me zoom in here. It's that same exact 15 minute gap, I'll end in red. Here's your 930 candle. And if you saw the ATM model examples, this is actually what I used on Wednesday to go short. Nice little run up into the gap, breaks lower. You have a market structure shift there, trades into a up closing candle range, which is your bearish order block, plus your fair value gap. Shorted right on the 925 candle and then wrote it down into the sell side pool down here, which is good. 24 ish points. And you just repeat this over and over and over again. How do you notice that CISD? So as soon as I'm looking at a market structure shift, I'm looking at two things, either a breaker or a intermediate term higher low to be broken. So as soon as I see this down closing candle and we close above it here, if we're bullish, see how all the down closing candles are held on the process. So if you kind of drag it over here, as soon as we close above that, you want to see the premium end hold as a bullish order block. And then we displace there all the way through so this up closing candle, if we were to flip bearish, should hold price down um, with the candle buys for the most part. And we don't want to see this high taken. So you start scanning price. Okay, is it closed back above this down closing candle? No. So that's kind of a first indication of a bearish reversal. Drops back lower, taps into the fair value gap. Plus we have the CISD and the bearish order block in here too. Um, and you can kind of frame it on that. So it's really the, the last candle before the reversal and it's going to be hard to spot sometimes but you have to frame it with a higher time frame period because this one minute chart means absolutely nothing until you pair it with a higher time frame chart you have the five minute 15 minute hourly chart you shouldn't even be looking at these lower time frames until you frame something 
um, on the higher time frame. Stop loss was above this high. Um, so, you know, a good like five, six points for a, what is this? 24 point, 25 point um, take profit. And you just keep doing it over and over. I'm really just looking at hourly in 15. And you go to the next next day and use the same exact stuff. Now, when you pair market structure with order flow, it becomes like it's super lethal because then you are looking at the highs and lows. You're looking at what order box we're holding on the way down or the way up. Now, um, I don't know what I was going to say. Completely just blanked out there. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> when we're bearish, right, we're going to be looking at the highs and we're bullish. We're going to be looking at the lows. So when you're marking out your mark structure areas, <clears throat> like your long-term lows, short-term lows, short-term highs, intermediate term highs, all that stuff, depending on what price is doing, you're only going to be looking at one side. So when price is bullish here between Monday and Tuesday, I don't really care about the highs being put in. I'm making sure that all the lows are holding what they're supposed to be holding on the way up and all the down closing candles. So that's your order flow are also holding. So if we go over here, I want to remove actually these maybe opening gap indicators. Pierce the sell side. We have a short term low here, a short term low that's lower than this one, and another short term low that's higher than this one. So this creates a long term low. Right, and this pool in here then actually is used as original consolidation for the sweep on Friday. Um, but as we hold this, I'm looking at the lows. Every single low it's put in as a swing low, the three candle pattern. So this right here is also a low. Is it lower than the long term low? No. And we have a short term low here and a short term low here. So this becomes an intermediate term low. And you can see we're also filling a for value gap right here. And we're holding a bullish order block. So we have order flow. We're trading down into a down closing candle. We're closing above. And we have market structure, all supporting the fact that we should move higher from here. So we have a short-term low here, short-term low here. This creates a long-term low because we're reacting off of a higher time frame level. Then we have a short-term low here, another short-term low here. And we have a intermediate term low down here. So when price breaks one of these intermediate term lows, you can trust that as a true market structure shift. Now it doesn't all the way, it doesn't have to be all the way down here, but something like this. This is technically an intermediate term low as well. You zoom in here. We've got a short term low here, short term low to the right of it. And a, you can kind of see how there's a short term low right there. So as price then breaks down past an intermediate term low and breaks down past a bearish, sorry, a bullish order block, you can look at this as your reversal. And we trade up into here um, right after London session, trades back down, and that goes into your New York session as well. So continue to do this and get really, really comfortable. You can go into replay mode and just mark out your short term lows and highs. And then as soon as we break mark structure here, Instead of watching the lows that form, because we already know if we're bearish, we're going to be assuming we're going to be putting in lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. Then you start watching the highs. So then we have a short-term high, long-term high, short-term high. We don't want price to break above this. Trades up, creates a short-term high, runs it. So if we were to create a intermediate-term high here, and we were running a short-term high, what do you want to see form to the right of this? Another short-term high. All right, so then this creates your intermediate-term high up into that and then we displace lower um, if you go to the 15 minute chart we have the same exact fractal in here we're right at 8 30 we're filling a 15 minute gap and you can drop down to your one minute use that as your context we're also holding the first order block in here and find your one minute um, market maker cell model and it's it does the same exact stuff every single day like you use that to find your bias and you go down to your 15 minute chart and you just use either the news or you use your true kill zones to frame a trade in the other direction. So if we're bullish on the hourly, you need to see a busy or you need to see a sell side pool at 8.30 or at 9.30 is swept on the 15 minute chart. 
a five minute candle closing the other direction, and then a one minute market maker model forming off that. And that's the same exact stuff you use every single day. Every single day, it's just you just get reps in. And once you keep on seeing it over and over and over again, it's it's almost too obvious sometimes. And like in here, we have a 15 minute chart. We got a run on stops, 8030, we have a bullish draw above these old highs. You have a fair value gap in here, trades into the fair value gap right at 930. You see a five minute candle closure bullishly probably and go back. This candle right here or this candle and then drop down into your one minute. Use that macro entry as well. Um, go long up to the highs, up to these highs. And it doesn't have to be a crazy 60 point move. It can be a nice 20 points and you know, that's your bread and butter. So I'm using the hourly 15 minutes. It's also good to use your London session kill zone as kind of a, a framework as well. So if London session is piercing the lows and we're already expanded off that, and we have a bullish narrative uh, on the higher time frames that we expected to trade up, then you want to see New York expand. If we have a something like this where Asian range and London are both kind of consolidating like this, you'd want to see a run above it in between tapping into the highs, things like that. And as we trade back lower, that's kind of your New York reversal profile. I think somewhere in the notes channel, it, there's posted the three different London profiles. Let me see if I can find it really quick. By AM trades, I'll send it into this chat. And those are really the only three. So then using news drivers, we then look at our, um, our economic calendar. If we have a news driver on Tuesday, understand that every single time we have 8.30 news, the day before that, if there is no 8.30 news, you're going to have rough conditions. Not going to be impossible to trade, but if you have something like a Tuesday 8.30 news, that Monday before is going to be extremely difficult. A lot of times it's going to be setting up um, you know, a consolidation range or setting up liquidity, engineering liquidity within that 8.30 news or that 2 p.m. news can run it and, and collect all those orders. Let me scroll up here at the chat, see what I missed. Yep, it's being recorded. I'll post it later today. How do you know what buy side or sell side to identify before the start of the week and or day? That's a good question. So it really just comes down to practice. There's not really a specific pool I can always like look at it and I know that's the one. Um, once we start the New York session on, on Wednesday, you can kind of mark out just the previous days um, so here's a Wednesday. We've got just any swing highs or inefficiencies you look at. Relative equal highs, pools during kill zones. So those are important. Um, if you have a kill zone pool, like a session liquidity pool from London or from Asian or for PM session from previous days, I'm always going to use those over any random high or low. So if you go to your 15 minute chart and you use something like this ICD kill zone pivots indicator by TFO, all of these lines are important. All these, not these red ones, but all these colored pools are their highs and lows from a specific session. So as we reach down into a specific level, I'm either using that from the 15 minute chart or just any obvious high or low that would make sense, right? Like any, if we're reversing here, I'm using these relative equal lows, this low, and this low as targets. It's nothing really specific, it's just comes down to practice really. How do I identify an intermediate term low? Is it a low that takes a previous short term low, but not a long term low? There's two different ways you can look at intermediate term swing points. It's going to be when you have a short term high, and you can flip this for lows too, but short term high, intermediate term high, short term high like this. And that's normally internal range. Your intermediate term highs and lows that are put at the ends of ranges like this and like this are going to be long term, especially when they're reacting off a higher time frame level. If they're internal range like this, that's going to be your intermediate term high. Your second classification of an intermediate term high or low is when it fills a fair value gap um, and leaves it. So if we see a gap fill, something like this, fills the gap all the way down and then leaves it, taking out the high that was formed as the retracement leg, I would count this as an intermediate term low. Now we don't need to see a short term low to the left of it, short term low to the right of it that's both higher 
As soon as we see, see this gap fill and it leaves, we trust that as an intermediate trim loan. You can use that as your breaking structure as well. Um, it just comes down to practice too and marking them out. But a lot of times these intermediate term lows that fill fair value gaps, if you drop down to a low enough time frame, like we'll mark this one out really quickly. If you drop down to a low enough time frame, there's going to be a short term low to the right of it, short term low to the left of it. Just on the specific time frame, it's going to be hard to see sometimes. So that's why you want to classify any gap fill that fills it and leaves it. So it's not going to be any gap fill that you see, like something like this. Is a perfect example actually. Let me remove some of this stuff. So see how there's a fair value gap right here. And as we retrace into this, this is the low that's formed right before we start that run back up. So I need price to displace past this low for us to classify this as intermediate term high. So we fill this gap, trades back lower, fails to take this out, then trades back up. That's not a market structure shift bullish. That's just a refill into this gap, maybe tapping into a you know, higher time frame gap. Got the inversion over here. Then as it displaces lower and takes out that original low, this becomes your intermediate term high. So if price was to then run above this with displacement, you look at that as a market structure shift. If you haven't seen the teacher's video, he does a fantastic job of explaining it. Because I think episode 12 on the 2022 was just, it was done well and he explains how to utilize that kind of high and low structure and what it means but i think the way of just spotting it i see doesn't explain it super well in there <clears throat> that's why you pair with order flow too so as long as we're if we were to take something out like a short-term high or short-term low but we're still holding the order box that's fine i think it's called here i'll send you the Something like that. If you have to watch the intro video, that one's good too, but <clears throat> advanced market structure, I teach it as this is the full title. Just remember every one hour market maker model will start from a higher time frame, PD rate and stop rate with SMT, exactly. Once you get good at it, you know, you're just looking exactly for that. But yeah, if you want to go to your four hour, your daily time frames and mark out those as soon as you run into that, I think you can definitely just look for like the, the, the for me, the daily chart is, is useful in a sense, but when we're consolidating like this, I don't get a whole lot of data out of this. Like just going to your strict daily chart, you'd have to drop down four hour. Then there you go. There's your four hour gap trades into there. Then you look for your one hour change in state, things like that. Same exact stuff you always use for the morning sessions, right? One hour draw on liquidity. It could be a four hour draw on liquidity and a one minute, sorry, a one hour PD array and use your 15 minute chart as your entry point instead of dropping all the way down. And I think that if you're new or if you're just getting into top-down analysis and using these higher time frames into a trade, you shouldn't even be looking at anything sub five minute. Five minute chart, 15 minute chart are great for entries, especially when we're looking at just trying to capture the entire range and using that entire um, kill zone as kind of your, your displacement area where you want to find an entry and displace. But if you look at this 15 minute chart and we go to all the high probability days, you'll see a super obvious entry point most times. As soon as we start the kill zone, we're slightly into it. Here's if your value got filled, displaces. If your value got filled, displaces. Value gap filled displaces. And that's kind of a textbook example, right? But something like this, where we have 830 news, it's a little bit harder to see. Running stops, running stops again. Then we have a gap in here during lunch hour, fills that. And you can use that as context as we trade back up during the PM session. You can use that. I mean, five minute, you know, you're going to have more data. But if you're not understanding what the higher time frames are doing, 15 minute, five minute, the one minute is going to be impossible. You're going to get so much data. You're going to be confused because you're marking every single PD rate, every single order block for value gap, um, all that stuff. And it's going to get way too confusing because you don't know actually what you're looking for.
Can you also go over the definition of a market maker model? Yeah. So typically you're going to have, I'll draw it over here. It's not going to be a exact replica every single time. That's the first thing you have to understand. It's not going to be like this every time, but you're going to have original consolidation in some manner or a swing low that's put in at a higher time frame level. Okay. They're going to have first stage of your accumulation, second stage accumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell. Sometimes it's given, um, sometimes it's just a CISD though. Low risk sell, first stage distribution, second stage distribution, and it runs that. And this second stage distribution here is your true silver bullet. So if you think about that of this right here has the least amount of high resistance, uh, I guess the, the least probability for it to be a high resistance liquidity run, it's gonna be a short jump into a gap or you know running short term highs and then just boom, runs aggressively. So think about this completion part of the market maker model is gonna be your opportune area to get in and run and get nice clean setups. And this can be framed on the hourly chart. This can be framed on the 15, five, one, anything you're using. Now think about your, the, the times that can line up with that. It can either be a kill zone. It can either be your silver bullet hours between 10 and 11, you know, two and three, all that stuff. Um, and if you wait patiently, look at Friday's example. This right here, you have your original consolidation, first stage, second stage, smart money reversal, low risk sell, and then you have your first stage distribution, and then your second stage distribution is on Friday, and it completes the market maker sell model. That's why you have this quick energetic run all the way down, you know, 230 points, and you can get in and just trust that it's going to complete that. You can go over here, right? You have a nice... At this point, we don't have consolidation, but it's just a smart one reversal, low risk, first stage, second stage in, in here where it just runs up aggressively, taking out these highs. And you just wait for the times to line up. So it's either going to be a kill zone or it's going to be a uh, silver bullet hour. And as soon as you, okay, you're looking for maybe one or two, maybe just one trade setup a week. You wait for it to be obvious. You wait for everything to line up and it's perfect. And boom, you can get in and you capture, you know, 120 200 point moves occasionally. And those are super fun to be in. I personally don't wait for that stuff. I like to find setups maybe two to three times a week. Um, but if you want, you know, a quick move, then maybe you're capturing the entire daily range. Sometimes it's it's fun to look for. We did some tea at the daily highs with Dow. Did it right on Wednesday. Confirm the SMR. Good stuff. What is that photo you sent? Um, let me see. That is your London stages. So depending on what London does, sometimes you can get a good feel for what New York is going to do. So on the bottom is each of the different stages of price delivery that London session can sometimes be on it. So you're going to use the 15 minute chart for that. One minute isn't noise, but it's filled with time distortion, which can be tricky to navigate for sure. Right. Especially when you don't know what you're looking for. It's going to get chopped up back and forth. So once the MMXM is done, you just zoom back out to see what the even higher time frame market maker model is saying, right? And you want to be trading in that direction. So your lowest resistance and your highest probability trades are going to be in that direction of the hourly or the four hour market maker model. That doesn't mean you can't scalp in the other direction. It's just going to be, when you're scalping the other direction, it's got to be quick, you know, in and out, looking for your low hanging fruit. But when you're scalping the other direction, it's like, okay, we can let this run a little bit further, leave runners on, and then use time to exit. And people don't understand what that means. It's just if we have something like a hourly drawn liquidity, when it's an obvious high, right? And we have maybe a regular day 
930 run stops, trees into a 15 minute for value gap, something like that. As soon as we get our entry, see there's a 15 minute gap. You can hold for either liquidity, you can hold for price, or you can hold for time. So if we have a bias of liquidity pool on the hourly chart, yeah, you can hold for this as it trades back up. Or if a high is put in, you know, we're taking out liquidity and it starts trading back lower. And this is at maybe 10, 15. You know that with a high probability, most times when New York is expanding, we want to see our high or low when we're bullish or high put in between 1030 and 11, sometimes continuing to lunch. So we can hold for price or we can hold for time. And same exact thing where we want to see that low put in between 930 and 10. So if we see um, you know, this low put in, we're digging into that, we can trust that this low won't be taken out again. Even if it gets close to it, if we're bullish and there's framework behind why we shouldn't take this out, you can pyramid in every single dip lower um, using that either 930 open or 830 open to get in. And as we have 830 news, you're going to shift those times back an hour. So you want to see your higher low put in between 8.30 and 9 and your higher low put in between 9.30 and 10. In this case, we have here's Friday's PA. Runs up here, trades into this gap. We have a 15-minute gap as well. Um, Five-minute gap up here too. Trades into it right at 8.30. High put in between 8.30 and 9. You want to see your low put in between 9.30 and 10. Here we kind of overshoot it by a couple minutes. And then it retraces going into the rest of the morning session. Nice little change in state. Mark maker buy model here. Um, and this is a counter by a scalp, but it was a really clean ATM model where we have a run on stops using the 10 a.m. news, 15 minute chart, runs the stops, closes back above. We just look for a five minute candle to trading other direction and close above. Here we have this nice 10 10 candle closing bullishly. Then you look for your one minute market maker model. Come in here, okay, you look for your breaker or your market structure shift, which you have both right here. Trades above it, taps in. Multiple opportunities to get in. You have a, a nice London close opportunity as well as it trades into the order block multiple times and then shoots up above short term high and then above the consolidation put in at 930, trading into a larger one minute civvy. You already showed this week's setup you caught. Um, I showed a couple ones in the video I posted, what, yesterday or two days ago? Um, and those have good in-depth examples. Um, this video right here, I'll send you the link. So this is from last week and this week, just the same kind of setups. I know, right? PA in, in March, hopefully we can continue this into August. But this PA is so clean to read. If you know what you're looking for, it's just so much easier than December's PA. How can we take swing trading in hourly? I mean, which low time frame we use it to ride the one hour price? So if you're looking at a one hour market maker model or a PD rate to be hit, you're going to be using most commonly the five minute chart. Uh, to look for that market maker model. So hourly goes to your five minute, 15 minute goes to your one minute, um, four hour goes to your 15 minute. And you can obviously keep going lower and lower, five minute goes to your 20 second market maker model. But if you really want to tear it up, that's like how low you got to drop. What point in the market maker model would you start to think, okay, maybe we're not reaching, okay, we may not be reaching to the complete this market maker model or reach original consolidation, what would happen in price? Um, I would need to see displacement past an order block. So if we're bearish, let's say, I'll go over here to the hourly chart. And this is our original consolidation. <clears throat> and we were bearish in this case. This up closing range here would be a bear shorter walk, right? So as we run price, if we were to aggressively pop above that, which is an intermediate term high plus a bear shorter walk, that to me would, I would, 
signs would start going off in my head. Flags would start going off. I know we possibly be filling this for value yet, but that's two different things that are high probability to show for reversal. So displacement past an intermediate term high or low, or displacement past an order block that should have held. Both those things are, are grab my attention instantly. Yes, sir. As per weekly profile last week was a midweek reversal. Also don't have Friday retracement 20, 30% into the range of this profile. Yeah. Um, whenever you have a Wednesday reversal, a lot of times Friday will close near the closing, I guess near the low if we're bearish. Same thing with we're bullish. A lot, the, tw the TGIF setup will happen most times when we have a classic expansion week. So you have Tuesday creating the low, and we have a, a nice large weekly candle. Then you can look for TGIF range to close on Friday within 20 to 30%. If we're completing the market maker model, a lot of times it won't close within 20 to 30. Um, same thing with your Thursday reversal. If we have news like NFP or 830 news on Thursday or Friday being the first one, and we have consolidation throughout the week, and we have a run on stops on Thursday, and then expands, you won't see TGIF a lot of times on this profile either. You can, but it won't be near the PM session. Preferably, you want to see it in the PM session, right, as it retraces back. But I think the easiest one to use would be, yeah, when we have classic expansion. Let me see if I can find something really quick. And then think about your daily profiles as well. If we're using a weekly profile, think about your daily profile that needs to complete that week. So if we have something like a retracement stage, you compare that with your news where whatever your news is showing is 830 days are most likely going to be um, finishing out the market maker model or completing a specific stage in, in the market maker model. Either the first stage of distribution, second stage of distribution, things like that. So we have 830 news here. We're going to be completing the market maker buy model. Those days in between where we don't have 830 news are either going to be consolidating um, or setting up for value gaps for price to dip into during those news days. So in this case, we have a Thursday expansion. Right, not, I don't think we had 8.30 news here. Expands up, runs back down here on the close. And then that 8.30 news runs back into the free value gap that's printed on Thursday and then expands up. Do you grade the market maker model using 25, 50%, and 75% levels? I don't, personally. I know we can see price deliveries at this, those specific levels. Actually, we can try it on this one. I might start using it. Probably not though. And the way you use that, by the way, is at each specific level on the right side of the curve, you're gonna see the stages. So near 50%, you'll have a consolidation run on stops. That's your first stage of distribution. Um, and then near 75%, you'll get your uh, silver bullet. Probably see it over here too. Consolidation runs the internal range sell side and then trades up and we have our second stage of distribution silver bullet right on that 25% level. I might actually start using that. It's solid stuff. Yeah, what Rob said was, was great. That profile. Yeah, and intraday standard deviations are cooking too. I saw those posts. I mean, now that PA is clean, you can actually trust those, right? All those little manipulation likes like this. If I were to pull this, 
yeah, tier 2.5 traces and then four met right there. Everyone actually screenshot this. We'll put up the. Whoops. Actually, I'll just type it in the chat here. So, one hour or higher, maybe four hours as well. Using market structure, order flow, narrative, weekly profiles, and news. Yeah, it's really good to study those because technically everything is a market maker model, right? Um, it's just finding how do you use them? If everything is a market maker model, how do you actually use them? Well, you have to understand the different stages and understand that they happen during kill zones as well. If I zoom out here, you'll see that every every important stage is happening during a kill zone. Here we have consolidation happening during New York. Sets up for... New York expansion here. We have a run on stops. Smart money reversal happening during the London session expansion. Smart money reversal or intraday run on stops. This is during your first stage of distribution. Runs it. And technically, you can use London session all the way up to 7 a.m. I don't suggest it, but something like this where we're expanding up another run on stops intraday expands lower. And every major reversal point on the hourly chart or 15 is going to have most times SMT during the kill zone. So we could have not ran this high out during on ES, which I think we did there. Is it Thursday? We did SMT here between these highs on Friday. SMT bearishly. as well as SMT between the Wednesday and Thursday highs on ES and YM there and there. So I guess you can also add the SMT into that list of objectives to look for. Let me type it up. And if you don't have those things you're looking for written down or the things that you're, I guess, monitoring and you want to be trading, you're going to trade everything that you see and everything that shows up on the chart. You're going to be trading every single macro, every single session. You got to wait for the thing that you feel most comfortable with in the market maker model. Maybe you're really good at trading the consolidation ranges because you know it's going to be more seek and destroy. Maybe you're really good at trading the smart money reversals as we reach in the higher time frame. You know, maybe it's the intraday run on stops. All those things happen. Um, but if you don't know which one you're going to look for, everything that you see on the one minute chart, everything you see on the 15 minute chart is gonna be a trade for you. So find out what you're really good at, find out what you're really good at spotting, and then just focus and study on that every single week, every single day, and you'll find it's easier to stay disciplined because you know exactly what you're looking for. And it's easier to stay patient because you know that that model is going to show up at least once a week. That's all you need. Would you consider market maker sell model on the four hour? Expecting that low at 17,606 to be taken. All the way down here. I know it's early, but we have that one, four hour busy at OT levels. It'll also be a major market structure shift. I do like the fact that this low here was broken with displacement. 
um, and we have quarterly shift. So I would assume, yeah, if it's if you go to the daily chart and you look at our if the if the data ranges look back, I would like this low to be taken out. I would also like potentially the January thirty first low to be taken out. Um, I don't know how far how farther down we can reach, but we have larger volume bounce in here as well as some inefficiencies um, that we can reach into. So yeah, I do think that seventeen six oh six will be taken in the next hopefully the next month or so. Any tips about how to have an efficient practicing session? Um, I think recording it or screenshotting every single example you get is extremely beneficial. Um, because yeah, whilst you're doing it live, if you're able to then just screenshot it, put it somewhere, and then when you're bored or when you have to compare what appears every single week, every single day, and you have a set of examples, then you can look and train your brain for the different variations. That's probably the number one thing I would tell you. Um, for me, I take screenshots of every single day, just the morning session and what I'm looking for. Hourly, 15, 5, and 1. And it makes it a whole lot easier for me to then review and I can classify them based on the news. I can classify it based on um, the different daily profiles. And then I can train my brain of, okay, yeah, we back to this. We, we got the screenshots we needed, but then I'm able to spot it easier i think than just looking at it one time if you can look at it multiple different times all on multiple different days it's it's beneficial yeah rob you have to use the it, it is a little weird but I don't think it would bring it back all the way to that, that low. I trust at least the February 1st, January 31st low. This one down here. I don't know what the range is at 60 days. 77 days, 63. We know. Negative 44 days. So that would still be in the realm of possibilities. This low down here, January 5th, I doubt. Maybe the seventh low. Is that within discount? Yeah, I don't think we'll reach all the way down for that one. But this January 31st is more, is within range. This one as well is in range. And we've been so extended since November too. It's kind of crazy. I do like this larger gap being inefficiently filled though. Runs down to there. Maybe then a market structure shift back up for the highest again. XY bears too. Yeah, we got this cell model that we're looking for since January. Still holding the breaker though, and we've just filled this volume balance and splicing up. So we got to see. And we got a lot of inefficiencies up here too. A little weekly actually. Just larger imbalance. Ran these relative equal lows multiple times, displaced past. Is this 50%? See, we did pierce 50% with that first leg. So if we climb above the February 12th high, it's possible that we reach back into this imbalance in the weekly. And that would go pair well with the uh, indices falling off. May have already said this, but if the market maker model is completed, what do you look for next week? And if you do... What do you look for if it's not completed? So if Friday does not complete the market maker model and a trace, then you look for Monday to complete it. If it's been completed, um, Monday most times will either retrace back into the range if Friday closes near the lower high, or Monday will just consolidate. Yeah, exactly. So since we completed it here, uh, if you go to NQ, and we've already completed this, with a large displacement and we've got this imbalance up here. Um, I'm assuming that Monday you will either chop around or maybe retrace back into this 9 a.m. for value gap.
It's crazy that you can literally predict the fall of stock and assist with the season with ICD concepts. I know. It's all the selling pressure, though, to be honest. All the sellers and the bears coming in with their puts, just dropping the market at the specific time. That's my take on it. Yep. I mean, you can already see on that daily chart we're still holding those last two up closing candles there. Displaced down, took out the intermediate term low on the daily chart. So I'd assume that the 20th of February low is next target for next week. Plus we got FOMC, I think, next week too. So that'll bring in some decent movement. Um, although Monday, Tuesday, maybe low probability stuff. We'll have to look. Um, NQ at one exclamation point. If you want it to be exact, I think you have to turn on break, you can adjust down here and it may switch it. Yeah, here's your contract change. So if you apply the B adjust, it'll make it look like NQM. If you don't have it on, then it'll be a little bit different. Chill, my uncle trade on the floor is buying pressure. Hey, he knows best, right? ICT concepts don't work. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap, up there, wrap it up there. I won't take too much more time on your Saturday. Um, stream recording will be posted. If you got any questions that I didn't answer or didn't get to, shoot me a DM. Um, if you want any of the back testing data as well, or you had any more questions on daily profiles, stuff like that. Be more than happy to answer those. Um, most likely stream on Tuesday for the tier two guys. I'll see you then. If not, we may just run another back to session on Monday or sometime next week as well. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe and we'll talk soon. Peace.